Hey everyone, it's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today we are going to be talking about apps and how convenient, right, for you iPhone users. I don't know what you Android users use, but we got apps on iPhones. <laughs> and so I have a very special guest today. We are going to talk about his app and how apps are necessary to business. You won't want to miss what this gentleman is laying down. Stay with us. Here we go. It's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today I have Mr. Dan Hafner. This man is absolutely incredible. He's an inspiration, very motivational, and he inspired me today. He's hailing all the way from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he's doing something unique with his company and in app development space. And that's not something we, we've gotten to talk about, but I think it's becoming more and more prevalent that businesses need to incorporate mobile apps into their business structure some way, somehow. And his company is helping us do just that. But we're going to talk about it today and why you, me, we should consider this in our business model and our business plan. So I can't hold this gentleman back any further. This man is absolutely exciting, passionate, and a business owner. So we got to give him a big shout out, bring a round of applause, y'all. Help me welcome to the stage, Mr. Dan Affleck. Hey, Marcus. How's it going, sir? Welcome to the Gentleman's Style Podcast Show. How are you today? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for having me, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to have you. This is significant. This is important, sir. This is, and but also, this is not easy, right? Um, I remember when f- the first app, I think Facebook started. I don't know. Maybe you could, maybe it was different. But that Farmville app that everybody had on their mm. phone, that was like the, the blockbuster. And then we started migrating to Androids and who has what and iPhone this. But, sir, before we dive into that, I want to understand your story. Have you always been an entrepreneur? Have you always been self-motivated, encouraging? Where did it all start for you? When did it all kick off? No, I have not, actually. Um, I... I... I remember being in uh, even high school, like as a younger, even a younger kid saying to myself, I literally remember saying out loud, like, I'm never going to have a job where I work behind a a computer or in front of a computer, (laughs) right? Oh, how wrong I was, how naive I was, right? Um, Because I was always big into sports, you know, I played football, basketball, baseball, I played college, like I was, I was just, I loved to do things. I was always out there doing stuff. So I was never really, I was kind of in that millennial space where early nineties, we didn't really grow up with the computer, but it came more prevalent as we, I was getting older and stuff. Mm-hmm. So no, I was not. I um, I had a couple of random jobs outside of college and then got into like the help desk and like, you know, customer service type of space. And um, eventually landed a job inside of a quality assurance testing um, d- department uh, with a big firm called Deloitte. Um, so I worked with them for a little while and that kind of sparked my, my world into this, you know, world of software and apps and we worked actually under contracts for the for the military, which was really cool. Um, and you know, in in combination with that, I had um, met my wife, my now wife, in college. I was a year in front of her, and she's in the medical field. So we were actually moving every so often. Um, we started long distance for a while, and then we moved to where she was going to medical school. And then there was residency and then there was fellowship. And now we're, so we've moved like four times. Um, so it got very hard to, to hold down my own, my own job for, for a little while, you know? <laughs> um, and then I was kind of, it, it just kind of dawned on me one day, like, Hey, why don't I just take this world of software that I've learned a little bit about and kind of venture into that and see if I could make that something. Um, so that's kind of how I got into this whole entrepreneurial world. And then it just so happened at the time I got bit by the, um, you know, Russell Brunson bug somehow, some way the uh, dot com secrets book found its way onto my uh, Twitter feed or my email or somehow I don't even remember how it happened. And then once I had that, it was like, oh, OK, there's a lot of different ways I can do things. Uh, you know, rich dad, poor dad, all those types of things. I think a lot of sure. people get their start on, you know. Um, so that's kind of how, you know, it all came to be, honestly, just kind of moving around different ideas 
and uh, and then working for people and realizing I didn't like doing that anymore. So <laughs> that's such a fact. That's that's so huge. And I, I I often come to this realization that all my experiences I've done insurance, I've done sales, person to person and business to business. I've done banking, finance, financial services, product sales, um, worked for the federal government, military. And I often find, I often ask my question, what are all these experiences have in common and how have they shaped me into the entrepreneur I am today? So how has your nine to five experiences and your job, your, your job experiences helped you become the man you are today? Yeah, it's a good question because in addition to those software jobs that I had where I just kind of learned everything on the fly, never went to school for it. I actually majored in political science of all things um, in college. And um, in, once we once we had moved on from that, um, where my job where my wife got a job in uh, her residency in West Virginia, I ended up actually landing a couple of sales jobs there. So I had um, I worked for a company in the logistics space of all places, um, and it was called TQL, which is very interesting. Um, so I really was introduced to the world of cold calling, um, hard ouch. Selling, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, it was ouch. It, it, but I learned so much. You know what I mean? Like I, I really that there were, I was thankful for that because it, it really taught me the 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 the, the principles again. It just, well, not taught me, but like it reminded me of kind of how hard it is to start in these types of things, how to differentiate yourself, how to message, how to talk with people, how to cut through the noise um, and and just be more personable. Because, you know, for I mean, it's a tip. I get to make fun of developers, I say, because I worked with them for a long time. Um, <laughs> as, as, as someone who's in this software world, you tend to be very introverted. I tend I can be very introverted. Um, so it, it was a good it was a good practice to be like, hey, get out there and talk to people because people are the real um thing you're solving for in a product that you're creating. Right. right. Uh, so that kind of, that really helped shape me. And then I also worked for a, um, a social media ads company for a little while doing sales and also building the funnels and click funnels. And, um, we did a couple of webinars and did things like that too. Um, so that way, when, when I started what I was doing, I kind of realized, okay, I have this, this technical capability that, you know, I'm not, I'm not into the coding. I'm not like, like super, I, all I want to do is build stuff. But then I also had this other piece of, well, I can talk to people. I can relate with people. I can sell and I can actually do it in a way that something I'm passionate about. I'm not just like selling loads of trucks, you know? <laughs> um, and I, I and that, that kind of helped me combine to that. You know what I mean? So then I was able to say, okay, I have, I have this over here and I have this over here. Let's combine them um, and, and do my own thing. So that's, I think that's kind of how that helped all roll, roll up into, into what I'm doing. Yeah. But very true. Who has been your biggest advocate or, or let me flip it. Let me flip it. Who has not supported you that you wish had supported you in your entrepreneurial journey in this app development space? Have you had a lot of naysayers, a lot of negativity, a lot of people giving you pushback like, oh, that's, that's crazy app. What's an app? We don't need that. Have you had anything like that? Um, I mean, probably like a lot of people, uh, from my own family for, for the first, you know, while, um, it was definitely like, um, yeah, what, what are you doing with this? Is this, is this going to work? Is this, you know, I mean, even to this day, my wife is, you know, she still will have times of like, Hey, are you, um, is this, is this ever going to like really, really take off? You're going to be like the next big thing, you know? And I'm like, well, Hey, you know, they could, it, we're not big, but we're, I've grown and we've, we've expanded and done some things like that. So. Um, that's really been the biggest, the biggest, uh, naysayers, I guess would have been my, the people inside of my own family, not, not only on my side, but on her side as well. And, um, and, it, and that, that was very hard to deal with. That was, that was really hard to deal with for a while. Um, and that took a lot of mental toughness that took a lot of like faith in myself and, and being like, okay, like I get that everyone's kind of yelling at me and everyone's like really doubting and, and scared, but they, they, they don't see the vision that I see and they don't see, they don't have the, the passion that I have for this type of stuff. Um, so that was, that was probably my biggest one. And, um, and that's tough. That's a very tough thing to get through. Um, but that where, you know, for, for someone out there, like in the audience, you know, like if you do have pushback from your family or friends or people telling you like, Hey man, like 
you sure this is going to work out? Or, hey, you've been at this for a while. Are you, you, you making the big bucks yet? I don't see you driving to Maseratis or anything, you know? Um, you know, you, you got to have faith in yourself. You got to believe in yourself because that's that's really, at the end of the day, it's all comes down to. There you have it. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a gentleman style podcast mascot. Love that guy. He's awesome. It, 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 so you are you faith? Are you a religious man? Is that what got you through those tough times? Is it, you know, something? Is it the Robert Kiyosaki books? Is it a big bag of weed? Like, is it what got you through those tough moments? Because like you said, those are those are hard, right? Mm -hmm. Those are hard moments in business. And I think we don't give enough credit to those moments. And I'm not trying to harp on the negativity, but it's it's significant. A lot of people I, I look at it like podcasting. There's a lot of people that join podcasts and they want to be a podcaster. They want to be an influencer, right? And they're on the TikToks and they're dancing and they're <laughs> doing all this crazy stuff because they think they're going to be this overnight success. But business is not easy, right? So what 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 gets you through? Is it is it the faith or something else? Yeah, I mean, I so I grew up I grew up Catholic. Um, you know, as after we moved after I moved away and went to college and. And then kind of, you know, went out on my own and then moved back in with my, you know, my girlfriend and now wife and stuff like I, I, I never really stuck with church. Um, and I kind of fell out of, of that for a little while. But as you know, over the past like four or five years, my faith has definitely like reasserted itself and I've grown and I've started to be a lot more curious and finally read the Bible. I've, I love to listen to the Bible, by the way. If you ever, if you ever, if you like Audible, get James Earl Jones reads the New Testament. It's like the greatest thing ever, um, just with that sultry voice he has. Um, <laughs> okay. But um, okay. that, it, yeah, shout out to that one. Um, but you know, I, I, I think that's a big piece. Um, and then, I mean, it's but it's faith in that, and it's also and it's and again, it's just faith in yourself. Um, I've always. I never thought I was like a very hard headed, stubborn person, but it turns out I kind of am when it comes to this stuff. Um, Cause I just remember like, even as a kid, like when I would make up my mind with stuff, like that was it. Like I was like, no, like I'm not compromising on this. I'm going to make this happen. And I think that's probably carried over in this. Like I remember just in the beginning, making a promise to myself was like, I'm going to do this no matter what. And it's terrifying. Like it's like, that's like the scariest commitment to make that you just, it's like, I know that I'm going to have some really rough shit and I'm going to have, I'm going to go through some terrible things, but I'm going to have, I'm going to have faith in God and I'm going to have faith in myself, you know? And, um, yeah. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for that. I want, I want to, I want to segue here and thank you for that book recommendation. James Earl, you said the new Testament. Yeah. I think it's on audible. Yeah. Audible. I love audible. Because yeah. that's how I'm always in the car. I'm always on the move. So Audible is my best friend. Yeah. So heart of goal, y'all. One, one more round of applause for Mr. Hoffman and motivation and pushing through. When when times get hard, he get he get harder. I want to talk about your Dapper mobile apps website. And so how did you come up with the name Dapper? Are you just a swag? Are you a G? Are you a player back in the day? Before the wife? <laughs> like, how did you come up with the name Dapper? And what's that? What's that mean to you? Yeah, I, I wish there was a better story. Honestly, um, I, when I was <laughs> at my when, when I was at my logistics sales job, I was, uh, you know, there was there's a lot of strange people that go through that that job because it's just kind of like they're selling the dream. It's like Wolf of Wall Street type of thing. It's like, hey, come in and let's just make tons of money, you know. So uh, one of the guys I was sitting by and working with, um, he he called me Dapper Dan every day. I don't really know why. Um, and then that was kind of the idea he helped me with the, I actually just changed the logo but the original logo was like the tuxedo t-shirt you know with like the little uh a little bit like your background on here but it was like the tuxedo t-shirt piece you know um so that was that was really all it was i mean i've i do i i've i've always tried to think about like ways to kind of look more you know dress more fly and do and do those types of things I, what my wife will say also i'm I, i'm do not live up to the Dapper Dan name a lot of times in my in the way that I dress, um, but I'm trying, man. I'm 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 trying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you look good, man. You're a sharp, dude. I I appreciate you, man. I was just curious. It just it stood out to me about the Dapper website. That's just, so, yeah. That's all it was, really. 
Yeah. I, I remember when apps were coming really prevalent and a lot of people um, were coming into it. What industries really can benefit? What businesses can really benefit? And this is your wheelhouse. I want to talk to your expertise. What businesses can really benefit from having an app on someone's phone? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, there's a lot, um, but you know, there's because the, there's people talk about business to business or business to customer or business to consumer, right? A lot of people, a lot of times when people think about apps, like you're you're talking about the business to consumer. You think about um, like an Eventbrite or Facebook, right? There's the end user is the consumer. Um, so, but like you know, e-commerce types of um, businesses can benefit from that. Um, events based businesses, um, even like there's even ones that we've seen that work really, really well is if for people that have content or have regular content, mm -hmm. um, even like memberships, those types of things, um, can really be beneficial. Um, there's, there's a lot, but in it, but then also you, then you flip it and you go into the B2B space. Um, that's really where more of the SaaS world comes in the software as a service where it's like, okay, we're not actually making this app for a specific user but more for a business type of use case or um or for multiple people to be able to use right so those work you know you can use law firms you can use uh dentist office doctor's offices um, even just startups and entrepreneurs that's been one of the the big ones that we've worked with is like either solo founders or small teams of like up to 10 people that are, are kind of getting their start maybe they got a first round of funding maybe they're just kind of trying to get this thing off the off the um, off the rails and off the launch pad, you know? Yeah. And um, this can really, really help for moving. You got to move fast in today's world. You know what I mean? Like you got to speed is, is just about everything. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's kind of a vague answer. I know, but like it, the, the short answer is pretty much any business, obviously. Like if you can think of like, Hey, I have a, an idea for software that, of any kind of auto, of any system that I repeatedly do that I can automate, you could probably build some kind of, it doesn't even have to be an app. It can be an automation for that. It can be a, an, you know, something that where you can use some no code software to put together like a Zapier type of thing or whatever. Um, but maybe you have something where you want to take an outdated system and move it into something that's more um, prevalent. Like you were just showing the the website that we have there. One I love to talk about is the uh, the chiropractor, the animal chiropractor app that we did, where she literally had like a fax based process where they would fax in things to get approval to do manipulations on animals and they did whatever. And it was literally just took from A to Z, took that entire process and just was like, okay, let's not do faxing anymore. Let's just put it on an app and let's just make it all there. So it, it was very simple and very, you know, straightforward to do. Um, so that's a very good one as well for updating so, um, outdated so, processes. Yeah. So break, so break that down. So the app allowed the physic, the chiropractor to have the clients upload documentations that she needed for approval quicker is that what is that what you were was it what it benefit her i'm trying to get to the sauce of how it benefited her yeah so it basically uh, there was there was three kind of consumers on this one application right you have the the animal chiropractor you have the clients who have those pets and then you have their veterinarian Basically, the vets have to approve to say, hey, yes, this animal is healthy enough to get manipulation, to get injections, to get whatever done to them, right? So in order to talk back and forth, the vet, the veterinarian and the chiropractor would have to go back and forth. They'd have to sign this document, send it back. But then the customer, the, the client might get involved and be like, well, hey, you know, veterinarian, did you get this? Did you sign this? It would go back and forth and it would all get lost in translation, right? So really what this did was help the veterinarians streamline this process so they don't have to just lose it in a fax machine print it out fill it all out by hand re-upload it do all this other stuff it just sends to them in their software they click through click sign send it away it's all taken care of it's all done it's all legalized it for they had new regulations that came out in the state of texas that said hey these have to be done in a legal way so that's where it was like okay check this box yes boom done so it actually it saved the veterinarians tons of time and tons of headaches. So the veterinarian is the business. The app belongs to the veterinarian and they're the ones that's pushing it or the physician. It was actually for the chiropractor themselves. The chiropractor. Okay. So yeah. The chiropractor. And, then they, they, and then they onboarded all the vets that they work with and all the clients that they work with. Yeah. Huge, huge changing the absolute. Game. You see how powerful 
Powerful, powerful, powerful. What is the difference between an app and a, a like a mobile app and a app on my on my on a website, a mobile website? What's the difference between the two? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, so when people talk about like native applications, right? Like that's one that you would actually go on. You talk about Android versus iOS, like they have app stores. <laughs> I right? got beef, that's why. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I always get crap for being an iOS guy because I'm a big <laughs> Apple guy. And when I develop stuff, because apparently when I worked with, you know, it was like, oh my God, you have an iPhone? Like, what's wrong with you, man? I'm like, I don't know. Like, it's what I've always had, you know? Um, but yeah, so I mean, so your mobile app, those are those are going to be downloaded from the app stores, from the Apple App Store, from Google Play. You actually download that. It's like an application. That's what app is short for, right? That runs on your phone. Um, the difference between that and one that runs like on a browser is that obviously you would access that application through like something like a Google or Safari or Firefox or whatever. And there's pros and cons to each of them. Um, because if you want to go through and you actually want to like, have a mobile app that's on the app store, that's on Google Play. Um, you got to jump through some hoops. You got to know kind of what you're doing. That's where like the bulk of what I do comes in with people. They realize like, holy crap, I never would have been able to do this if you didn't know how to do this <laughs> because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to go through approval processes and then they'll reject it and they'll say, hey, this is wrong and you didn't do this right and you got to fix this and you got to do that. So there's a big gatekeeper aspect in there. Whereas if you want to just publish something to the internet, it's just like publishing a website. You put, you know, there's a lot of drag and drop types of things out there on websites. You right. can put something together, buy a domain for 10 bucks, put it, slap it on there and publish it. And it's live in a day, you know? Right. So there's no real gatekeeper into that. There's no, um, barrier to entry. Yeah. yeah. Barrier to entry. Exactly. So, um, but then it's also you got to market it. You got to make sure it's optimized. You got to do all that type of, type of stuff. Whereas when you enter, that's I think one of the biggest things that people don't realize is that the App Store and, and the Google Play is such a undertapped or underappreciated market. I mean, there's almost half a billion people visiting those app stores every single day. Every single day, Marcus. I mean, that's unbelievable. Like that's game changing. You know what I mean? For for. Yeah. Like it's like a hundred bucks to list your app up there, twenty five bucks, you know, on the on the app store. So yeah. is it? So I don't have to do the SEO and the marketing if I put it on the app store because there's people scouring and constantly looking for apps to check out and download. Is that what you're saying? Versus a the, website where I got to optimize it, like you said. There is ways you have to optimize on the app store. Yes, it's called okay. ASO instead of SEO, um, but it's a lot. I mean, to me, it's easier. I've never really gone down the SEO route and there's all like backlinks and it's, it's always been kind of confusing for me and how that works. ASO, App Store Optimization, is a lot more straightforward. You, you can pick your keywords, you have a title, you have images, and you can A-B test stuff now. Um, so it's a lot more straightforward. And it's, I mean, so for example, you talked about the app that we built, you know, back in the day, the running app where I lost weight and, you know, did that stuff. Once I got that optimized, which took me a few months, I mean, we were getting anywhere between 100 to 200 downloads a day, and I was literally doing zero work. You weren't promoting it. You weren't, you weren't doing no. no TikTok dancing. You weren't nothing. Wow. No, I wasn't doing anything. I was working on other things. <laughs> it was over here just doing its thing, getting me like 100 to 200 leads a day. Like, it was wild. It's um, a huge benefit. That's a huge perk. Yeah, that, that that almost sells itself because you got to spend the money. I, I I get commonly frustrated when I see business owners, they try and leverage referrals, right? Because they don't want to spend any more money in marketing and advertising. But I feel like as a business owner, that's kind of a line item. Like you already you you have to budget for marketing. So that that'll significantly help that marketing aspect to to have an app that once you once you spend the time and the energy and and partner with you and your company and you help me figure that out that's a, it's 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 go time it's it's one and done um what what's i remember back in the day apps you know is there a lot of coding involved do you have a is there a, a coder on your team that'll help me with issues if the app goes down or it's fall off the apple i store um what's what's the follow up or is it you just help me set it up and then you know, I take it from there. What's the, what's that process look like? No, that's a good question. So that is one of the more interesting things, I think, at least about what I started doing. So when I first got into this game, 
you know, I was kind of doing the sales stuff. I was doing the, uh, the customer support things, QA stuff, whatever. Um, I wanted to launch this app idea that I had had for a long time and I didn't know how to code. So I went to start to learn how to do it and God bless you. If you can do it, I could not figure it out. It was about two weeks and I was like, this sucks. I don't want to learn this stuff at this point in my life. Like I don't, it's, it's like, it just it, on top of being full-time employed, all this other stuff. It's like, no, a migraine. yeah, exactly. So then I was like, all right, well, I'll hire somebody to do this. Right. So I, I went and I found different agencies. I found all kinds of different people, Upwork, whatever. And I was getting quotes between like a hundred grand and like two fifty. <laughs> quarter million dollars yeah to do this thing and i was like okay that's not fun so one thing leads to another and i find this wide awesome world of what's called no code right so that is what i turned dapper mobile apps into was a no code development um, agency or you know service where you can actually build and launch apps without having to use code so that's what we do as far as getting people's software or applications built. Um, so you ask like, hey, I need changes. I don't know how to code. I don't know what to do with this. The beauty of it is that it's all built on these programs. And there's a lot of platforms out there like Flutterflow, Bubble, Dalo, like all these different platforms where someone like you, Marcus, could actually go in and if you wanted to, you don't have to, but you could figure out like, well, I don't like the color of this button. Okay, you go in there and you click and you change it from yellow to blue, right? Like it's simple it's it's like building like a GoDaddy site right yeah so but but we also offer you know things that are like i don't want to even have to do that okay great no problem um but then the other piece that i started to to find was and this was kind of where where it went after i had built several things you know we, we were kind of in business for a year or two we're building all these cool apps for people and then they weren't getting the results like i was getting like getting 100 200 downloads day leads day whatever and right. i was like why is that and I realized it was because not a lot of people know how to like if you have an idea, if you if you want to launch something, you might not have an idea of really how to truly market it. And then two, you don't really have the back end systems to really be able to handle what like what what would you do if you got 100 free leads a day or 200 leads a day on, a, on like without having to do anything? Like what would you even do with them? Do you have a do you have a back end system in place to even follow up with them, to sell them anything, to sell a ticket or like anything like that? You know, a, a CRM. CRM, right? So that's also what we've built um, is that it's basically like having your front end application. Think of it as like an ebook or a lead magnet. You can even do it like that. And then it's tied into your back end CRM. So you can, somebody downloads it over here, boom, they're put into automations over here, right? And then you can do with it whatever you want with them over here, right? Um, so then we're adding in pieces where you can do you know, ads and webinars and sell things like that too right now. So um, it's it's more than just, hey, we'll build it for you and then off you go and best of luck. Like you can do that if you want. If you have a, right. if you have the experience and the, the you know, the, the ability to do that, more than happy to help you, right? Um, but if not, then that's that's where we, we like to partner with people and like, okay, like let's actually get you some results. Let's, let's sell this thing um, so you don't just sink money into it, you know? Love it. Huge. That helps a lot. So it's not just a one and done. It's it's we're with you. We're gonna build this thing out and we're gonna make it work for what you need it to do. Huge, huge, huge. A heart of goal, y'all, Mr. Dan Hafner. We speaking of 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 apps and paying bills, we gotta pay some bills, y'all. We'll be we gotta go to a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned, stay with us. We'll be right, right back. I'm Marcus Norman, bringing fresh vibes to hot topics surrounding culture, relationships, business, finance, sex, dating, faith, and everything in between. Whether you're into passive income opportunities, trending topics and useful relationship tips, or dynamic guest speakers, there's something for everyone. You can expect all that and more every week. If you're down with this content, then consider joining our growing community by subscribing to Gentleman Style Podcast and smash the bell to get on our VIP list. Your support means the world. Thanks for watching. Link to my channel. Baby Gear Services DMV specializes in high quality baby gear rentals in the Maryland and DC metro area. We have a wide range of baby gear items for rent, including wooden cribs, car seats, high chairs, and more. 
We also offer seasonal specials and free delivery. Our prices are very versatile to cover every budget. Wooden cribs start at $17 a day, high chairs and even car seats start at $5 a day. Check out our website, www.bgsdmv.com. We are back to the Gymnast Style Podcast Show, and we have the incredible Mr. Dan Hafner spilling the tea on why you, me, all of us, most of us, I say all of us need to in, to include an app in our business. And Mr. Dan, I want to I want to ask this question. How so how can I give me an example where I can use an application to actually grow my business and grow grow my either influence, right? Maybe I want to grow as an influencer so I want to expand and touch newer markets and and different people or grow my revenue and profits. Can you give me an example of that how I can use an app to grow my business? Yeah, you know, I would have probably given you a different answer about this like a year ago. Um, oh. But now, <laughs> since we've uh, we've had the awesome uh, and wonderful chat GPT that has graced the world, <laughs> um, this is this is probably my my new answer is how how can you right? Like you think about well, what, what is, wait, what, what was your old answer? Let's start there. What was the old answer? And then tell us the new answer. Can you do that? Yeah, the old answer I would say was, you know, again, kind of what I talked about before, using as lead gen, right? Like okay. Using it as a lead generation piece to then put people into a CRM somehow. But you're, but you're using it as this this front end value add of, like, you know, say, hey, you coach, say, Marcus, you coach people on how to do podcasts, right? Which you, I do. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. So you can put together a very simple app that has, you know, resources, samples, downloads. Um, your show, your private show, all kinds of different things, just as an example off the top of my head. Now, when people download that, you can, boom, take them into your CRM. You can then sell them those services. So it, it's almost like a free value add out front that you could say, hey, download the app, download the app, do this type of thing. And, um, you know, a lot of people like these, you know, even think about school, like school is really blowing up right now. A lot of people have their communities inside of there and it's a great tool. It's almost like having, you could almost do your own private school. Like you could just you know, rebrand that to be like, hey, this is our school, our community where things are going. You know, that's always um, one of the things like that. And then where I kind of flip this and say the new answer is, you know, you think about what what is your business valued at? Like if you were to p- post your business for sale today on, you know, a, a, a brokerage website that sells businesses or whatever, something like Flippa or something, what would what would your business be worth, right? They're going to look at your your recurring revenue, your customer base, your expenses, the whole nine yards. Like I don't really know how they value businesses, but it's very simple, right? Um, well, software or systems you have in place can be then put inside of the asset column. Hey, I have this cool tool that's actually provides tons of value and can be sold at its own separate thing or it can add to that asset column of your business, right? So what I actually have been encouraging people to do is think, you know, what type of software tool could you create inside of your specific business that would add to that asset column that you could either sell separately or bundle inside of your business that would up the the value of your of your business or your LLC or whatever it is, right? So maybe you just make a simple I mean, not simple, but like maybe you make a really cool little AI tool that, um, you know, there's there's one I just I just got the other day that it, it, you can take these podcast recordings and you upload them. Right. And it spits out short form content, blog articles, SEO stuff and, you know, summaries. And then, boom, that's just that's a huge value add in and of itself that you can take over here and you can sell as a service sep- completely separate. You can then bundle that maybe into a coaching thing that you do or a program thing that you do. And you could say, Hey, I'm actually going to give you free access into this thing that we sell over here for two grand, right. Or something like that. Um, so what type of tool, what type of, you know, tool that runs while you sleep, let that somebody can use at any time of the day, any device that they're on that, eventually points them to you that eventually kind of is like, Hey, there's this awesome value because it, it lends itself to just so many more marketing opportunities and things you can promote and little commercials you can do just like on your show. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, 
a lot of things. It's just, it's very like you open Pandora's box when you really start to think about it. You know, that's true. That's true. I wanted to ask this question and I really, I'm seeing the power of having an app. What should someone have prior to reaching out to you? What, how much money should they have? What documentation should they have an LLC? What if they're doing it as a hobby? What should someone have before setting up an appointment with you and your team? It's a good question. Um, so I would say, I mean, you got to have some kind of a budget. Um, it's hard for me to say. We don't usually do projects that are under like 2,500 bucks, really. That usually ends up being like the lowest threshold we'll do. Um, but, you know, there's no cap on anything. Like, you, you for know, sure. You have a million dollar budget, like we'll that gladly take the money. Um, <laughs> For sure. um, you know, I would I would definitely have and, and that's kind of the thing where you obviously need to have some kind of idea, some something that's even if it's half baked, that's OK. Um, that's what the wonderful world of chat GPT and, and Gemini and all these things are for is you can flesh those things out. Um, you don't necessarily need to have traction or validation or things like that. If you do, that's great. That's awesome. Um, but at least something of like some kind of direction and knowing, OK, here's what I want to build. Um, even people put together very simple slide decks. I get presented all the time of, hey, here's how I want to do this. Or like it's like almost like a pitch deck for funding or something like that. Mm. You know? um, so that's always a possibility. And then I do recommend that you have at least a business, you know, an LLC, something established. Um, you don't have to, even though like in order to publish and actually get those launched, um, especially on the app stores, Apple and Google are going to ask for that. They're just going to ask for your business documentation. Sure. Um, so that is very good to have. Yeah. But other than that, that makes sense because Google and Apple ask for documentation. Um, should I have a stationary business or, or can I, can I use an app for a mobile business? So I've, I've played around with the idea of having a mobile business. Like, I was recently looking at franchise opportunities and one of them was like a mobile donut um, shop where mm -hmm. it's the donut shop is hitched to the back of this truck and I sell donuts and lemonade and um, coffee out of this donut shop, <laughs> this mobile donut shop. So do I have to be stationary and have an office and a corporate headquarters and all of those things to, to be able to use the app effectively? Or can I be mobile and, 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 and customize the app so... Like, say, for example, I want to alert people where I'm going to be, like my schedule or my route. Mm -hmm. Can 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 I be mobile in that way? Yeah, I mean, I would probably think you, in order to establish and I'm not a lawyer by any means, but I would think, you know, in order to set up your your legal entity, you'd have to have some kind of permanent address. Um, but you don't have to be a stationary office building business. That's actually a very good um, thing we built, we built up something very similar uh, that we're getting ready to launch for an, uh, an ice cream truck, ice cream truck business. So along the same lines. So, yeah, what, they, but, you know, they have it established in one place, but they're a mobile based based business. Yeah. So they have both. So they have a stationary location that you can come and get ice cream if you're in the area or your proximity. But they also have a mobile ice cream truck that goes to the community. I believe so. Yes. Powerful. Yes. Powerful, yeah. powerful, powerful. So this is huge. This is huge. So is is the introduction, where do you see the future of apps? Where do you see, because you have that 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 knowledge, that insight, where do you see the app, the future of apps going or any, you know, contra any technology that's coming that's going to impact the way we experience apps? Anything you see coming down the pipeline? Um, I mean, I think something to pay attention to that I've been paying attention to recently is all the different stuff that's been changing with Apple. So they've, they, I don't know if, if your audience is aware, there's a big thing going on in, in the uh, European union right now. That's really kind of getting to the bottom of whether Apple has the right to take that 15% or 30% off of those commissions and such. Mm -hmm. um, when you sell your app on the web, on the uh, app store or, or, you know, in app purchases and things. Um, I think that's a very interesting thing to pay attention to. Um, Cause if you think about apps like Netflix or Spotify, they have the apps available on the stores, but you don't actually purchase it through there. You, they, they direct you out of it and you go to their website and you purchase over there. Right. 
So it's a, and, and that's not a standard they hold it's just because Netflix and Spotify and those types of Pandora, like they bring in a lot of traffic and a lot of money. Right. Um, right. So there's a very interesting thing to think about there, but they're also kind of making it. So those types of, yep, there you go. So they're actually um, being a lot more lax with having those progressive type of web apps, those, you know, browser based ones on the Apple App Store as well, because that used to be a big no-no as well. So that's starting to change too. So um, it's almost like the NIL in, in college football. It's just becoming a lot more relaxed and like things are changing. Times they are changing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but the future of it, and I was just speaking with a, one of my colleagues the other day, especially inside of this no-code space where we are, where we're building things with no code and using these, these platforms. Um, he said something very interesting that I, I'll, I'll share with you guys. He said in five years, um, no code is going to be AI. Like that's, it, that's just what it's going to be. Mm. And I was very interested. I was like, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, you know, I think right now you're kind of, you still have to do some of this manual work around where you have, I want to drop this header in and I want to drop this text in. I do this button and I can format it and do all this other stuff. And he said in five years, all that's going to be gone. It's all going to be prompts. It's going to be like a chat GPT for app and software creation. You just type in everything. And there's already some out there that exist. We actually use some of these as well. Um, they're by it's kind of like a lot of like AI. It's kind of like it gets the job done, but it's clearly in its baby stages. And it's like, okay, you know, it's probably better to just do by hand for now. Um, <laughs> so, but that that'd be very interesting because that would literally make it so anyone who can just type can do things. I used to say, hey, if you could point and click and you can drag and drop, you can make an app. But now it's in the future, it's just going to be like, well, if you can even do like, you know, <laughs> the, pecking. The, the pecking typing, like you could probably do it. You know, it might take a little longer, but you could probably do it. So I think that's I, I tend to agree with them. I, I tend to think that's probably where things are. I don't know about five years, but um, it'll be a very, very interesting world here in five to ten years. I think the world is changing, y'all. The world is changing. This is this is huge. Sir, you have dropped so many nuggets this episode. This is incredible this is encouraging and insightful for not only myself selfishly but i think a lot of businesses could really benefit from an app and now you have streamlined it and you you're helping and you're giving back and you're allowing people to to grow right we're all unless you're in a hobby or you or a nonprofit, but the goal is to grow and get the word out i feel like even a nonprofit could benefit from growth um, like I said, just getting out there. If we have a nonprofit that wants to like make impact and make a difference in the world, I need people to find me. And so what would, again, what would a not, what would your nonprofit benefit from 200, 300 leads of people that want to know more about what you're doing? So huge, 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 100%. powerful. Miss, Mr. Hapner, thank you for being here. This is absolutely epic. How can my audience find you? How can we follow you? And how can we, the train has left the station. But it's not too late to hop on board. So how can we connect? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think one of the best, there's two There's two things. You can um, go to dappernocode.com, uh, which is right there on the screen. Um, and then there's actually a cool little uh, uh, resource on that page. Um, if you scroll down, there's an actual literal app cost calculator that you can walk through. It's about five steps. You just click and go through it and it will spit out an exact dollar amount to say, hey, you're probably looking at about this to have this built. Um, let me tell you how valuable that is because I have tried all kinds of different competitors out there and they always want to email you and they always want to get you on a sales call. They always want to do this. So we just are like, no, here you go. There you go. Figure it out. So um, that's super, super valuable as well. Super powerful. And yeah, for our audio listeners, and for our audio, thank you. For our audio listeners um, that are listening in, uh, it's D A P P E R N O C O D E dot com. So I got, I'm learning that I got to spell these things out because there's audio listeners that can't see the screen. Um, but I encourage you guys yeah. to go watch the <laughs> watch us, right? We're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Audible radio.com anywhere you get podcasts we are there and you can connect with mr dan the man grand poobah that's what i'm calling him today grand poobah <laughs> sir thank you for that. being here this is epic i want to say this to you publicly sir continue to grow and and don't ever quit 
we we need you we need this to help um future entrepreneurs so thank you for what you do don't ever quit. thank you thank you marcus i appreciate that man it's been awesome thank you for having me on absolutely and thank you all for being on the gentleman style podcast show today i hope this message helps i hope mr hafner has provided you as much valuable insight as he has for me this is huge and epic and necessary i want to thank you and end the show here we gotta let him go he has many more customers to see a business to continue to grow and a family he's a family man he has a family to support and continue to love so thank you for being here hope like we end every show take care of your friends Take care of your family and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman and the incredible Dan, the man, Dan Hafner, gentleman style podcast show. Love you guys. Bye.